Okay, so I'm just going to give a brief summary of uh, the first policy lab. Um, so we very much continued on the discussion from the, the keynote this, um, this morning from Fabrizio Barca on territorial cooperation and how governments can get closer to the citizens. Uh, Alona presented the, the policy brief, uh, which, which was also uh, touched on and discussed this morning uh, in more detail and highlighted the importance of polycentricity in, in cohesion policy and in territorial cohesion. Uh, again, she highlighted the, um, the no single governmental level um, is, 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 is suitable and requires a multi-level approach and very much rethinking and developing a new culture of uh, public policy relations and collaboration um, at a functional scale. Um, in this hard and soft governance, both have a role in promoting polycentricity once there is a, an embedded culture of cooperation amongst the policy actors. Uh, cooperation and uh, new soft spaces must, must have their heart, at their heart, however, democratic, prax democratic praxis, uh, otherwise they will lose legitimacy among citizens. And she also highlights the collaborative, go pla collaborative governments and planning as a precondition for ESA funding. So in response, uh, Giancarlo Cotella, um, who worked on the SBON Resi and Compass project, highlighted some of the challenges of implementing poly uh, polycentricity in concrete practice. Um, in particular, he highlighted that uh, at the, the issue of functional regions and the use of these more soft spaces and fuzzy spaces is not a widespread phenomenon across Europe and are institutionalized to greater or lesser degrees, and some of them are very much uh, experimental. Uh, so it's a very heterogeneous, heterogeneous picture uh, across governance scales and across the, in different countries across Europe. Um, in addition to the three con uh, two conditionalities, which have been mentioned quite a lot in, by various, uh, various speakers, the legal conditionalities and the economic conditionalities of carrot and stick and institutionalized power and institutionalized ar um, ar um, arrangements, he very much lamented the the third conditionality, which is, uh, and, the, and the absence of this conditionality, which is more of a cognitive conditionality, and the demise of discourses and narratives and visioning as powerful tools to engender buy-in and give these new spaces meaning among citizens. Um, uh, Lukas Magowski, from Sp uh, who was involved in the SPEMA uh, project, gave some very practical examples from Prague in implementing ITI. So like all large cities, Prague is grappling with many of the problems of suburbanization, sprawl, commuting, and transport. And he, he, light, he highlighted three asymmetries, which are key challenges for ITI. Uh, one is power. Uh, so effectively, in Prague, there's 400 municipalities. And there's very much an imbalance in the power relations between these smaller municipalities and the larger core cities, which is hard to coordinate when you have a large core city in the centre which is with a lot of political power and then you've got multiple municipalities in the periphery of the city which are all vying for attention. Economic, power, uh, economic asymmetries which is the sometimes the perverse impact of EU, EU funding where the central city is, is, is a high income um, <coughs> municipality and does not qualify for funding while um, smaller municipalities do. So this means you have a mismatch between investments where investments are placed in the peripheries of cities where they'd be more ideally suited to the city centre and the core city uh, for the overall development of the, of the functional area. And the third was scale. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that ITI funds in Prague account for just less than 1% or 1% if I got the, the number right of the overall budget. And it's hard to get buy-in as to the importance of cooperation where the overall budget envelope is actually so small relative to the overall budget of the, of the, of the municipality. So political buy-in and scale in terms of funding is, is, an, is an important uh, issue in terms of the overall implementation of ITI funds. And lastly, um, from the European Com Commission, Zalka Jaga, um, just gave a flavour of the big picture and emerging proposals from the post-2020 cohesion policy, where, where there's obviously in, there's going to be new incentives to bring Europe closer to citizens and incentivise cooperation. So there will be a requirement and an expectation that member states bring to the table um, their partners and stakeholders and actors at all levels which will be involved in implementing new, these programs. ITI will be maintained and streamlined and C CLLD will also be expanded but also crucially be a tool for delivering sustainable urban development. 
And lastly, I think it's a challenge to member states and all, perhaps to all of us, and particularly ESPON, um, will not only be top-down proposals from the EC in terms of program development, but will be open to other tools and innovative proposals for cooperation from member states with their own conditionalities. So bottom-up proposals from member states uh, in terms of, of developing new programs and new ideas for cooperation and, and governance. So that was it. Great. Thank you.